So, in this video, we will analyze in detail how to create such a demoscene using the sphere tracing technique. This scene is built on the basis of one well-known geometric fractal, and this fractal is called the Menger sponge. It was first described by the Austrian mathematician Karl Menger in 1926, and is an extension in the third dimension of the Sierpinski carpet. In turn, this so-called carpet was described by the Polish mathematician Václav Sierpinski in 1916, and if we mention this fractal, then let's take a little time and build it using the game of chaos. Let's use Python in the Pygame library, and here we have a carpet class with update and draw methods. And an instance of this class is created in the main application, where its methods are called accordingly. And in the end, we have an empty window that will act as a canvas for drawing the Sierpinski carpet. There are various methods for its construction, but the most interesting and simple is the construction using the chaos method. For this method, we need to select eight attractor points in the square area, they will be at the corners of the square and along the midpoints of the sides. In this area, the initial point is randomly selected, and then at each iteration one of the attractors is also randomly selected, we go two-thirds of the distance to the attractor and set a new point. And similarly, we begin to do these manipulations at each iteration, which will ultimately lead to the formation of a fractal. Then in the constructor of the carpet class, we can set the positions of points for all attractors in the unit square. We will also define a random position for the initial point and an index for choosing the attractor. Now, at each iteration, we will choose the index of a random attractor, according to the index, we get its coordinates and calculate the position of the new point as two-thirds of the distance to the attractor. It remains for us to scale the coordinates according to the resolution, and let's draw this point in white. And in this way we can see how the Sierpinski carpet is formed with the help of chaos, and this is quite an interesting sight, but in order for this fractal to really look like a carpet, let's decorate it. I propose to define a list in which each attractor will correspond to a certain color, and based on the index of the attractor, we will display the point in the desired color. And now we can observe a really nice fractal carpet, which I would like to lay in my room. So, to be honest, I deviated a little from the topic of the video, but it was a crime not to mention the Sierpinski carpet, without which there was no Menger sponge. Well, and now let's use all the power of the GPU, and get this fractal in the third dimension. And for this we will use the OpenGL fragment shader, which is applied to the rasterized two triangles that form our screen. So, in this shader, a standard sphere tracer is written and simple lighting with ambient occlusion is implemented, and you can find a link to this code in the video description. The whole scene is built in the map function, and at the current moment the signed distance field for the sphere is defined here. If we run this code, we will see the sphere as a test object and here the light source coincides with the direction of the rays. And now let's look at the general process of how we will create a Menger sponge. So, it is intuitively clear that we need to create a simple cube as the original object, then from cubes reduced by three times we create the so-called cross, and now it is enough for us to subtract this cross from the cube, and then we will get a Menger sponge of the first order. And having realized this stage, we will later see how quite simply it will be possible to obtain higher orders of this fractal. Then let's write a function with which we can get the distance to the cube, we define its size in a separate variable and use this function instead of a sphere. And let's use the maximum function to look at the intersection of two planes y and z, and in order to clearly see what is happening, then let's choose a view of the object a little from above, and we will rotate the space around the y-axis. So the intersection of the y and z planes forms an infinite rectangular ledge along the x-axis, which can easily be turned into an infinite box. To do this, it is enough to take the absolute value from the point P and subtract the value of the box size. And so we have an infinite box along the x-axis, and in order to get a cube, we now have to take into account the x-plane itself. And by the way, the size variable determines half the size of the cube, since the absolute value mirrors this value relative to the origin. And thus, using the operations of intersection and absolute value, we got the desired cube, and now our task is to make a cross that we will cut out of the cube. So we will write a separate function to get the cross, where we will reduce the size of the side of the cube by three times, and we will make three infinite boxes along each of the axes, and combine them using the minimum function. And as a result, 
we got an infinite cross, and at the same time we got it in a rather cheap way in terms of computing resources. And it remains for us to use the operation of the difference between objects. So we take the maximum of the distances to the objects, but with a negative sign for our cross, since it must be removed from the cube. And in the end, we got a menger sponge of the first order. And let's now look at how we can get its higher orders using our functions. So, for the next iteration, we again reduce the size by three times and use the space repetition operation, and for example, let's repeat the space along the z-axis. Then again we get a cross, and combine all the objects together. And look, now we have a reduced cross that repeats endlessly along the z-axis, and at the same time it is obvious that if we subtract it from our menger sponge, we will get cutouts at the required positions. And then let's repeat the space along all axes, and similarly perform the operation of the difference between objects. And so we get a menger sponge of the second order. And it probably becomes obvious that such a process of forming higher orders can be formalized into one function using loop. And now you can see the implementation of such a function called get inner menger. Here, using the number of iterations, you can get the interior of the menger sponge of the required order, which we subtract from the original cube in the map function. And as a result, we get a menger sponge of the fourth order. Of the interesting features of this fractal, the following can be distinguished. The menger sponge has zero volume and an infinite area of faces, and a physical object dissipates shock waves very well. And unexpectedly, but the section of menger's sponge by the plane indicated on the screen contains quite interesting hexagrams. And let's talk about how to decorate our fractal, of course you can use triplanar texture mapping, but you can do otherwise. As you can see, the map function returns a four-component vector where the first three components are the color of the object. Then, based on the coordinate of the point P and using the floor function, we can give the sections of our fractal some colors. And in such a simple way, we get a fun coloring for our fractal. But I would like to talk now about another interesting thing. This is the inner infinite space of the menger sponge. Let's say we move along the z-axis and rotate a little around it, and now we will only be interested in the negative result of the inner menger function. And then we get into the infinite inner space that we subtracted from the cube earlier, and here we can resort to some creativity and create something interesting. And let's say we don't really like the current coloring of the space. In this case, we can use a hash function to get the color, and in doing so, bind to the value of the time variable. And now it's getting more fun, and you can see how the colors change periodically in some areas of the fractal, but we can continue to improve our scene. We can add some rotation of the camera, and besides, let's make a fog effect, the color of which we will take in much the same way as for coloring the fractal space. And so in our scene it gets even more interesting, and right there we can implement some simple reflections, and let's look at how to do it better. So, the reflections are still found with the same ray marching loop, but we just have to move away from the surface a little along the normal and use the reflected ray direction, which was used to find the specular component. Then we will form the point P, get the normal and calculate the illumination according to Lambert's law, and at the end we will form the overall color of the fragment, taking into account the color received from the reflected ray. And now our walls have become glossy, and we can see the reflected space in them, to be honest, I do it all in an amateur way and only share some basic things to create something more, but still, if you are bored with the interior of the menger sponge, then you can resort to another trick. Let's do the following, in the inner menger function, at each iteration, depending on the scale value, we can slightly change the position of the p-vector. And as a result, we get a space in which it is already difficult to recognize the original menger sponge, and it seems to me more like some kind of alien spaceship. So here you can continue to experiment with the shading model, lights or shadows. And by the way, this scene looks quite stylish in simple shades of grey.